welcome. You're watching Next IS English. Today we are going to talk about a case that is a great example of how law, environment and ethics come together in India's Supreme Court. It's about the great Indian bustard. One of the most endangered birds in the world and how a court case about it changed the way we think about environmental protection. So uh, this case it was by Justice P.S. Nar Narsimha in 2025 questioned whether our environmental laws focus too much on humans and not enough on nature itself. And he said we must move from an anthropocentric, human-centered approach to an ecocentric one, meaning nature has its own right to exist. This case is relevant for UPSC, GS Paper 3, Environment, Biodiversity, Judicial Activism and GS Paper 4 also, Ethics for the concept of Ecological Ethics and uh, let's go through the case and see how it started and what it means for conservation in India. Moving forward, let's talk about the case. What exactly is the case? Let's understand the case briefly. So the case began with a public interest litigation PIL filed by environmentalist M.K. Ranjit Sin. And he asked the Supreme Court to protect two birds, the Great Indian Bustard, GIB, and Lesser Florican, both facing extinction. Okay, And the bigger reason for their deaths was collision with power lines from solar and wind energy projects in Rajasthan and Gujarat. Yeah, and these birds fly low and have poor frontal vision, so they can't see the cables. The petitioner requested that the court should ban the overhead lines in these areas and shift to underground cabling or install bird diverters. The case soon became a major topic of debate. How do we balance renewable energy growth and biodiversity protection at the same time? Moving forward, let's talk about the birds at risk. Now, the both birds that we have talked about, let's talk about these birds and why they are at risk. Let's understand why these two birds matter a lot. The great Indian bustard is a critically endangered species and only around 150 have been left in the wild. And 70 are there in captivity. The lesser florican is also endangered with around 70 surviving individuals in the wild and their habitat, these birds mainly live in arid grasslands of Rajasthan and Gujarat, especially the Thar and the Kutch region that are now full of solar and wind energy installations. The GIBs, which are Great Indian Bustards, are called flagship species, meaning if we protect them, the entire ecosystem benefits. And sadly, the grasslands in India are often labelled as wastelands so that they don't get proper legal protection. This makes the GIB, Great Indian Bustard, a symbol of India's grassland crisis and our broader challenge of development versus conservation. Moving forward, let's talk about the case timeline from 2021 to 2025. Now let's understand what is this timeline and what exactly happened when. So, uh, Here's how the case evolved step by step. Let us understand that. In 2021, PIL was filed and the Supreme Court ordered underground power lines and bird diverters in priority zones covering about 99,000 area, 99,000 square kilometer of habitat. In 2022-2023, the implementation order faced challenges because undergrounding lines is extremely expensive. It is around 3 to 5 crore per kilometer and technically very difficult in desert terrain. Then in March 2024, there was a seven-member expert. The court set up seven-member expert committee to find a balance between protecting the birds and supporting the renewable energy expansion as well. Then in November 2025, Right now, Justice P.S. Narsimha made his landmark remarks questioning Western ideas like intergenerational equity, calling them too human-centered. That's when the focus shifted from just conservation to the philosophy and ethics of how should humans see their relationship with nature. Moving forward, let's talk about the 
what Justice Narsimha said. Let's understand what exactly Justice Narsimha said and what he meant by it. So Justice Narsimha's statement was both legal and philosophical. He said many of our environmental laws come from Western framework and uh, like the intergenerational equity. This principle means that we should use resources in such a way that future generations can also enjoy them. But he pointed out this still focuses only on humans. It doesn't recognize that other species also have a right to exist, whether they are useful to us or not. He said we must adopt an ecocentric approach, which is uh, nature specific approach that is seeing nature as having intrinsic value independent of human benefit now his line extinction is not an option this line became the highlight he also linked the idea to article 21 which is the right to life which now includes the right to a clean environment and article 51 ag which includes our duty to protect all living creatures so this case became a moral call for respecting nature, not just managing it. Moving forward, let's talk about legal roots and the references. Now, what are the legal roots and the references? Let's talk about that. So, speaking of which, this isn't the first time India's judiciary has talked about ecocentricism. In 2012, there was this first mention of the Red Sandalers case became a turning point where an amicus curiae, a legal expert assisting the court, said that endangered species should be protected for their intrinsic worth, not just because they're useful. Then the Supreme Court also added that saving citizens must show compassion for all living creatures. Our constitution also reflects this. And Article 48A states that state must protect wildlife and the environment and wildlife while Article 51AG states that it makes it every citizen's duty to care for the environment. Relevant laws like the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and Environment Protection Act 1986 give the legal base for these judgments. So Justice Narsimha's ideas wasn't new but it gave these principles a stronger and a more philosophical foundation. Moving forward, let's talk about the data reality. Now see, talks are different and the reality is different. Let's see what reality the data shows us. Let's look at the real world picture now. Uh, between 2018 to 2024, around 1200 GIBs died, most of them due to power line collision. And in Rajasthan and Gujarat host nearly 90% of their remaining population. Which means even one project in these areas can make a big, big impact. Underground power lines cost around 3 to 5 crore per kilometer, which makes large scale conversion very expensive. At the same time, India has a target of 500 gigawatt by 2030 renewable energy, and many solar and wind farms are in the same. GIB zones. So the question is, how do we meet our climate goals without losing our biodiversity? This case represents that tough balance. Development and environment must go hand in hand. And moving forward, let's talk about UPSC links. Now let's talk about what this case, how this case links with UPSC and how is it relevant for UPSC. So for UPSC GS paper 3 topics, these are the most important topics. The case touches multiple slavers points, which are biodiversity, conservation and judicial activism as well. Then, you know, project busted, endangered species, environment laws and governance, wildlife protection act, F EPA, judicial activism includes using PILs to shape environment environmental policy, all these are included in GS Paper 3. Now for ethics, GS Paper 4, eco-centralism, environmental morality. You can also quote the case, this case in essays or GS Paper 4 answers to show your awareness of environmental ethics. And a possible means question could be evaluate India's shift from anthropocentric to eco-centric environmental jurisprudence. So in your answer, you can refer to both the Red Sanders case and the GIB cases as examples. Moving forward, let's talk about the way forward. Now let's understand what is the way forward. See, the court didn't just stop with criticism. It also inspired future action. 
here's what experts and policy makers suggest so let's have a look what the suggestions are number one declare a GIB priority zone so a GIB priority zone uh, in 96,000 square kilometer where no new overhead lines are allowed number two use AI based bird diverter sensors that alert on or redirect birds mid-flight number three strengthen captive breeding with modern monitoring to reintroduce birds safety number four create a national biodiversity fund for you know renewable energy firms can also contribute via their CSR wing and fifth form a joint monitoring cell between environment and power ministries sixth develop a national grassland policy recognizing grasslands as vital ecosystems seventh include ecocentric thinking in education and UPSC ethics curriculum as well then end with this thought when a bird's right to fly meets a nation's need for power the constitution must choose life this shows how environmental protection and development can actually both coexist with the right mindset so i think we have mostly covered all the aspects of the topic now let's move on to a question for revision we have already discussed this question in the video and let's see if you were listening attentively and if you will be able to answer this question which of the following constitutional articles was directly invoked in the GIB case to support environment protection a article 14 B article 21 C article 19 1a D article 32 do tell the answer in the comment section below we are going to like and reply to the right answer we are also going to pin the right answer so please definitely you know reply to this in the comment section below let's see who was listening attentively and uh, we have covered this topic multi-dimensionally we have also talked we have talked about multiple things we've talked about why GIBs are important why grasslands should be considered as vital ecosystems in our country and how we can learn from other countries as well what Justice Narsimha said about the case we have heard we have done a multi-dimensional approach of this video so if you enjoyed today's video if you found today's video informative do like share and subscribe to our channel and do comment what are your thoughts on this case of GIBs and that's it for today I will see you in another video until then bye bye take care